good day. Welcome to another interesting episode of chemistry. Uh, today we will look at the chemical equations. So we know in our chemical reactions we will be expected to write down the chemical equations. So what are really chemical equations? The chemical equations simply means it shows the reactants in your reaction and also the product of a reaction using the chemical formula. The reactants are what will be used up in a chemical reaction and the product is what will be formed at the end of the reaction, right? And the other important thing is that there are three types of, we'll talk about the types of equations. For now, I want to talk about the state symbols. The issue of state symbols is very important. The state symbols tells us the state at which your reactant is in, right? Is it, is it, it can either be a solid, it can either be a liquid, uh, gas, or aqueous. Or normally, aqueous, we write a Q to say it's aqueous, it has been dissolved in water. And for gas, we write small n and small g. And then for gas, for liquid, we write small n. Also for solids, we write small s. So, for example, we are told that this is potassium iodide. We have dissolved it in water, that's why it is a Q. It's reacting with chlorine. So this, if you remember very well, this is one of the displacement reactions that we talked about when we were looking at the, the halogens, when we were looking at the halogens. So it's aqueous signifies that it has been dissolved in water, and then gas, chlorine, aqueous also, and then aqueous. So the state symbols are very, very important, very, very important. Note uh, in the following equation, that's why I read, note the following equation, denote the following in a chemical equation. So in a chemical equation, we use chemical formulas. The equation has to be balanced. That's why I've placed two here, and then you've placed two there. I think by now you know how to balance chemical equations. And then after balancing the chemical equations, ma make sure that your chemical equation has state symbols. As state symbols. So there are three types of equations that we are interested in as chemists. We have word equation, we have chemical equation, we have ionic equation. This chemical equation here we can call it a symbolic equation. Now using what? Symbols. Symbolic equation we are using symbols. So there are three types of them. Like I've said, word equation, symbolic equation, and then ionic equation. What is really uh, a word equation? So the word equation we are saying, it gives a description of what is happening during a chemical reaction using the chemical names of substances taking part in a reaction. So we are mostly looking at the chemical names of what is really happening in the chemical reaction. For example, in the last example that we looked at, if we were to ask you to write the word equation for it, so this is potassium iodide, which is there, potassium iodide plus chlorine, to give you potassium chloride plus iodine. So this will be its word equation. From there we also have, um, I will want this to Okay, and then this one that I've written here is the symbolic equation. This will be the symbolic equation. This will be the symbolic equation. Now we use what symbols of these elements or these compounds in order to, to write the symbolic equation. Now, the most interesting part, we have what we call ionic equations. So the ionic equations shows the chemical ions that reacted in a reaction. Or we can say it describes a chemical reaction that involves ionic compounds. It shows, it shows only ions which take part in a reaction and also ions which do not take part in a reaction. So the ions which do not take part in a reaction are called spectator ions. So how to make an ionic equation? These are the simple steps that you should follow. Number one, you write the chemical equation of the reaction, and then before you can separate 
only across composite make sure that the reaction equation is balanced this is very very important very very key and then you can separate only aqueous compounds in the reaction into ions since we are saying ionic equations we want to see ions remember ions are what are charged species they can either be positively or negatively charged number three then you cancel out the spectator ions the spectator ions are those ones which will appear on both sides of the reaction equation let's take an example let's take an example you are, you are given sodium hydroxide which is aqueous plus hydrochloric acid which is aqueous to give you sodium chloride which is aqueous plus water so what is the rule the rule says we must make sure that the reaction equation is balanced that's the first step so if you look na atoms this side is one also this side is one you look at oxygen one oxygen one hydrogen there are two one two hydrogen this side there are two so cl1 cl1 so the reaction equation is self-balanced and then what we do we need to show the ions and these ions we only show it in what in those compounds which are in aqueous state why because in aqueous state the ions are mobile they are free to move so we are going to show which ions are present in sodium hydroxide we have na plus right then you write aq and then plus the hydroxide ion which is oh minus aq plus also we need to show here it's H plus it's an acid when you dissolve it in water it will give the H plus it will donate the high positively charged hydrogen this is AQ plus the CL minus AQ and then also we show for NaCl is Na plus AQ plus CL minus AQ but the water here is because it is in liquid state you don't dissociate it you write it as it is h2o liquid and then what do we do we say that those ions which appears on both sides of the equation should be cancelled out so we are having na plus this side we are also having na plus this side you cancel it out we are having cl minus you are also having cl minus this side should be cancelled then you write the remaining one the OH minus AQ plus the H plus AQ and then you are for me you know you, you can see just from home you see the OH minus you add it with H plus there will be two hydrogens and one oxygen which will give you water then you write H2O liquid and you write H2O liquid so that's how we write the ionic equation that is what i have for you today enjoy the rest of your day thank you